Welcome guys, Thunder E here, and yes, we're doing another video where we're gaming, but this time it's all about the brand new Samsung S95D. This is the latest TV from Samsung, their latest OLED, QD OLED technology, and if you're joining us for the first time on the channel, don't forget to smash that subscribe button notification icon so you can get notified with more videos like this. Now you're probably wondering where I am, and if you are a fan of the channel and you've been watching us for a while, we're in a new office and I did say I would show you guys the office and we'll do an office tour, but we do have to fix a few things, hang a few curtains, get some anime posters up here left and right. You, you get the idea, you know it. But let's focus on the S95D. So at CES, we saw this TV. It's the one with the anti-glare coding or anti-glare technology as Samsung calls it on an OLED and half of you went bonkers. You were like, this is crazy, this is nuts, I don't like it, where's my glossiness? There's none. But still, this is one sexy TV. Overall, design-wise, it's slick and clean, still very reminiscent of last year's design model, but super thin, 11 millimeters, straight lines across, this TV is gorgeous. Now, it comes with a one connector box, which you would expect, two cables, uh, one is a long one connector cable, one's a shorter one if you're mounting it at the back, or in my case, I put it into my you know TV stand uh, cabinet here. Now overall, the, t the TV looks really good, so if you're, you're putting it on the stand or credenza, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Also comes with this really small remote control here, which has a built-in solar uh, charging and all that fun stuff, and this display is something that we have to talk about because it's crazy. Now you're wondering why I'm actually standing outside doing a TV review. Well, it's quite simple. It's the elements. Now, Samsung has done something really unique with its new S95D TV because of its anti-reflective display. And what that means is that you're not gonna suffer with sunlight like everyone else while watching TV, but better yet, let's go check it out. So I said sunlight, I give you sunlight. Well, it's actually uh, studio lights reflecting on the display here. Now the display is off and you're still wondering, okay, why should I care about sunlight on my TV? Well, if you've got a lot of windows in your apartment, your room, your home, your house, wherever it is, you get a lot of reflections on your display, which can make the viewing experience really bad, especially during daytime or even just glare at night, especially with an OLED display. Now Samsung this year said, look, we're gonna change that with our anti-glare uh, anti technology. And it's kind of similar to what they have on the, uh, the, the frame series, but it's a bit different. This is specifically built for the OLED TVs. Now, on a black screen like this, you can see some of that light bounce back, but you don't see reflection. You do see the light bounce back. And when you actually turn this TV on, um, it's, it's less and less visible. Now. In terms of the specs here, we've got a QD OLED display. It's 144 hertz. It's the OLED HDR Pro technology. It's very vivid. Watching content on here, it looks absolutely amazing. Playing games on here, which is what we do on this channel, looks absolutely crisp. God of War, Ragnarok, you can barely see any of that hard light hitting the display, which is quite interesting because we went ahead Point in the studio lights directly on it just to kind of simulate some very harsh lighting, which is not sunlight, by the way. And yes, you can see the light kind of shine on it on the black screen, but when you're playing content, it is almost not noticeable. Now, to simulate real light, we have a window here right above my head, and there is this ray of sunlight that comes whenever it hits about noon. And yes, you can see that ray of sunlight, but because of how vivid and sharp this display is and how much glare, anti-glare technology is built into this, it really takes away and cuts it off. And the viewing experience is really nice. So I really like that aspect about this TV. Now, speaking of brightness, this TV is 3000 nits. Now, those official nit numbers are not from Samsung, but you can check Samsung display to give you that information. But that being said, what does that mean in terms of watching content? Now, one of my favorite movies, yes, I know some of you don't like Batman v Superman, but I love this movie. And I love all Zack Snyder's DC movies, by the way. So you guys can fight about that. 
This is a movie that was shot at 4,000 nits. So for something like this, it's a very good test to see how well this TV handles uh, in terms of you know maximum brightness in certain scenes and things like that. So the scene in question to me is when Batman and Superman fight, the final fight, you know. We've got scenes where there's a lot of fire, uh, you can see the suits, and one of the beauties about this is that it's at night and you can clearly see Batman's suit. It's very vivid and clear. You can see the indentation of Superman's palm print on there, as well as also uh, when Superman is shot with kryptonite and that gas looks, looks really surreal. So you're going, yes, Thunder E, that's cool, but you know, when I watch a movie, I'm not really focusing on specific points like that. I wanna see the action and all that, you know, crazy stuff. Let's put in perspective for what we like to do best. We like to game. And looking at the games we play, brightness, HDR come in as a beautiful mix because you want that nice color volume. Whether you're playing a lot of feature rich games like say Horizon West or even you know God of War Ragnarok or even something a little bit more dark and maybe muted like uh, Call of Duty where you're gonna be getting colors, bright scenes, dark scenes, and you want to make, you want to actually see all of them quite clearly. Now, I can talk about the games, but I think we should actually see them in action and also listen to how well Samsung has done with the speakers built into this TV. It will be fun. The games looked absolutely stunning. I love the way games really shine on this TV, whether it's the Xbox or the PlayStation. Uh, you clearly saw it, you know, we played Call of Duty that looked absolutely great. Uh, Horizon West is such a smooth looking game and the features this TV has really adds to that gaming experience. Now, we mentioned earlier, this is a 144 Hertz uh, capable panel. And we did some PC gameplay, playing some Doom, Doom Eternal. You can see how well that handled, uh, you know, gameplay. Granted, it was a gaming laptop, not a gaming PC. I could have pushed it a bit more, but again, it was really fun and fluid. If you don't have a console, but you still want a game, Samsung also has the Gaming Hub, and the Gaming Hub has access to over 3,000 games. And that includes Xbox Game Pass, that also includes uh, GeForce Now, uh, Amazon Luna, and I got to jump into, you know, play some games on Luna because Xbox Game Pass, for whatever reason, the controllers don't work. Xbox fixed that. It still works on every other service here. Um, it's not a Samsung thing. It looks like it's just Xbox. Now, some of the other features that you find that this TV adds to the gaming experience is the Game Motion Plus. So, you know, making sure that you're reducing latency while you're gaming, and you can access that quite easily through the Game Bar. Now, the Game Bar, you, all you need to do is your, your remote control, hit the, uh, the play or pause button, just hold it down, that brings up the Game Bar while you're, you're playing. And it has a ton of functionality there. Uh, it's got, of course, the different uh, game genre modes which you can select, or it's, built-in AI mode will automatically detect what game you're playing. So you're playing Call of Duty with an FPS, it detects that, it gives you the right picture and also game settings for that. So darker scenes are brighter. If you're going around the corner in Call of Duty so you can see your enemies, those kind of things, or if you just suck at gameplay like I do, right? And then you also have uh, the mini-map zoom, which is a really impressive feature, which Hayato doubted massively. But it works really well, being able to have your minimap blown up in one corner, left or right of the screen, um, and also having enough viewing experience to enjoy your game. So a racing game, a game like Warzone, which you need a map for, those kind of things really work out well with this. So I really like what Samsung is adding to the table here. Now, another thing to mention is the audio. 
you heard how well it sounded. I increased the volume a couple of times, but I never got past 50% in terms of audio because it's really good in terms of just giving that nice rich bass, especially where you're playing shooters. Uh, and in that game and experience, you get a very full understanding of where you are within the game. Now, the AI voice enhancer is also really good. Picks up audio really well. Uh, playing Resident Evil Village on the PlayStation 5, you could see that it picked up the just the tonations really well. Granted, they were in Japanese and not in English, because for whatever reason, it's just plain in Japanese in terms of speech, but whatever. It still sounded really good and very clear. So it's at least I could I could re I could realize they were having a conversation or somebody was saying something quite clearly. Gaming aside, you also have, of course, the brand new updated uh, Tizen TV hub where you have the main home hub that gives you a couple of options. There's the For You section, there's a Live TV section, and the apps. Apps is pretty much where you just download all your applications and different programs that you're using or streaming services. And then the For You section uh, gives you a recent, uh, actually quick access to some of the games you're playing, whether it's streaming services or even, say, your consoles. Uh, one thing I did like was the 80s Rewind section. They had a nice collection of 80 movies, you know, Indiana Jones, Coming to America, Ghostbusters, Star Wars. Now, it also shows you the places you can actually get those movies, whether it's paid or as long as you sign into the services, you, you know, it give you the pricing. So I do like that that's kind of creation is there because I'm an 80s kid, so for me, this is actually pretty fantastic. Then of course you have your daily hub, which is a quick access to daily activities, uh, like smart things, being able to turn off uh, things in my kitchen, for instance, or turn it on if I want to, because it's all connected. Samsung has an ecosystem outside of, you know, regular smartphones, including appliances, which is pretty cool. And then you have your ambient hub, which is more like a screensaver or wallpapers or something close to what you find with the the Frame TV series, but not as good as the Frame in that respect. Now, this TV isn't the perfect or best TV on the planet. There's some things that I feel also are a letdown. Now, that starts off with the remote control. First off, this is an expensive TV, and even though I do like the small form factor of the remote, I wish it had a much more premium feel. Now, I do like the fact that it does have solar charging on the back, which means you don't have to actually charge this. Uh, even though it does have USB uh, type C charging. But one of the things that you'll find with this remote that it is a Bluetooth remote control. So which means typically with Samsung remotes, you don't have to point it at the TV, which is in that direction. You could point it there and change stuff, but I can't do it anymore. It doesn't work. I actually have to point directly at the TV. And if there's something blocking your path, like say this, it doesn't work at all. So. That's just a big bummer there. The other thing too is the new um, NQ AI engine, Gen 2. I feel, I find that sometimes the TV has its sluggish moments. Nothing too crazy, but it does have some sluggish moments, which should not be the case. That being said though, this TV has a lot to offer. Um, I really like the gaming performance that you're getting from here. I think as gamers, uh, the anti-reflective display uh, technology that Samsung has here is fantastic. Anyone who complains about it and says, I don't get that glossiness, you don't want that glossiness, especially when you're gaming, if you have um, you know, a lot of light coming to your room, windows facing your TV. This thing does an excellent job. That is the one thing I truly like. And on the, as a gamer and the gaming experience, it's absolutely fantastic. And the audio is great. I haven't connected a soundbar to it, and honestly, it's done a really good job. So. Would I recommend the, the Samsung S95D? Yes, I would. I think this is the perfect TV to game with. And I think it also is a really great TV to watch with too, especially if you're watching high knit content with you know HDR and all that fun stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know. This is Thunder E from Board of Work and we will continue to make more videos like this and always enjoy the entertainment.